Hello everyone, welcome back to Build with Beto. Analytics is a crucial tool that can save you time and even boost your revenue for your application. Historically in React Native, integrating analytics has been painful until Vexo came to the picture. If you don't know what is Vexo, Vexo is a tool for React Native applications that allows you to see analytics and insights about your application. In this video, we're going to learn how to create custom widgets and custom dashboards that can allow you uh, to gain more understanding of your users and that will help you make better decisions uh, in the long term. So let's get started. Alrighty guys, so this video is going to focus only on new features for uh, Vexo Analytics. But if you want to learn how to integrate Vexo Analytics, uh, you can actually start for free. Uh, it's pretty nice. And I also created a video um, a while ago, but uh, the, the instructions to integrate analytics is basically the same. Uh, it's very easy, actually. You just need to create an account in Vexo, get your API key, and then uh, you should be able to start getting analytics and insights. Now, in this video, we are going to go a little more in depth because most of the time, although they provide, you know, very good information. So if we go to the new revamped UI that they have here, they already provide you with active users, session time, downloads, drop offs, and uh, many features, but actually Vexo allows you to create also custom events, which is something that I really like. And based on those custom events, you can do something even cooler, right? So for example, the feature that we're going to be focusing right now, it's going to be custom events that allows you to create uh, these beautiful widgets and these beautiful graphs that can change based on your needs or, or based on your application. It's not, it's not just the same, right? So yeah, let's get started. Um, if you want to install analytics, you just go and check out this video. I'll leave the link down here in the description. Okay, guys. So before we jump into the code, I just wanted to show the dashboard that I currently have for my app, um, only chats, as you can see here. So only chats is a, an application that we learn how to do as a final project for my react, uh, native course. And you can check it out at codebibeto.dev if you are interested, or if you just want to download the app, uh, just to test it out, you can do so by just coming to the landing page and you'll find these two links here to download it. So once you are here, once you created your Vexo account and all that, um, let's go to the code and see what we have here. Um, so here I have the only chats app. Let me reload this app here. So these only chat apps, um, as you can see, just to show you that it's very easy to have the Vexo configuration. I'll just go to the package JSON and show you that to have Vexo up and running, you just need to install the library. As you can see here, I already installed it. This will work in Expo and, and the CLI. And then we also have the key in the entry point of the application. In this case, my index.js. And I'm just pointing to these environment variable. Now, if you are not sure how to use environment variables, it's very easy actually with Expo SDK 49 and above. Um, you can just Google environment variables in Expo and you'll find how to set up your environment variables so that you prevent this from going to GitHub or you know anything like that. All right, so we have the configuration. As you can see, very easy, but if you want to learn step by step, just go and check out the other video. Now I'll just show you guys that my application is running on iOS here, as you can see. And also uh, down here, we can see Vexo engine started and let's see the Android device. Let me just reload to make sure that this is working with the latest um, updates. So I'll just open only chats again on Android. And this is how it looks. So very nice. This is real data from real users. And um, we have the light mode on the Android and dark mode here. So um, wh when you have your application, you, you need to start thinking what kind of information is going to be very valuable for me or what kind of information I really need um, in order to you know, make better decisions or, or, and things like that. So let me just move this to the right for, for a little bit. And let's go to the code. I want to show you guys a couple things. Um, so first of all, we need to create a custom event 
um, and custom events are, are very simple with Pexel. Uh, basically, you just need to think, where do you want to create this custom event? So I'll just search for custom event. And I already created four, by the way. But one of the custom events that I would recommend, and I think it's pretty basic, everyone should have it, would be a sign up event, as you can see here. And here we are in the part where we are signing up the user for the first time and we're creating the entry in the database. So in this case, I'm creating a custom event using Vexo. And I'll show you the details. So first of all, custom event, it's been imported from Vexo Analytics library, as you can see. And that's all you need to know. Um, so if I search for this custom event, you can see that I'm calling this function just at the moment that I'm creating a new user. So in this case, I'm using GraphQL and I'm saving the user. And um, so as you can see here, I, I also have this user save to DB and Redux. So the cool thing about, about custom events with Vexo is that we can assign attributes to this custom event. So for example, if I want to know the first name, the ID, the email of the user, we can save this kind of data. Now, if you want to extend this, you can do so by adding more and more and more um, um, fields here. But um, you know, you can always come back and add more more um, attributes to this object, and you should be good to go. Um, okay, so once we have this custom event, I will show you one more. The one that um, actually I can easily test. And this one is going to be, um, just say, don't save here. This one is going to be the postcard. Now the postcard will be, you know, this card that we are seeing here in the home screen of the app. And my custom event, as you can see here, will, it's going to, it's going to be named likes. And every time that someone likes a post, I'm incrementing the likes, but let's say that for my business logic or for my, you know, I need to know who's liking this post or I need to know more about the posts that are being liked the most, right? Vexo can help us to gain more, more understanding of how this is being used, this feature, the, like, the likes feature. So in this case, I'm creating a custom event, very simple, we'll give it a name and then we pass the payload in this object. Now, like I mentioned before, this object can have many properties. It can have strings, it can have booleans, it can have um, numbers, okay? Now, in this case, I'm just saving numbers, which is the number of likes and strings, right? Strings would be the first name of the user, the email, platform, and any other kind of information that you need, you can do so here. So for each like, I'm saving this. Now you may be thinking, this is not very helpful, right? So we are just going to get a lot of events with this info and would be nice if we can do something with this data. But thankfully, Vexo just released a new feature that will let us uh, do so. So first of all, let's see if this, if these custom events are working. I'll just go to my uh, website here where I have my Vexo app and then um, if we scroll down, you can see that I already have these, um, you know, these dashboards, but um, what I want to show you here is going to be the custom events. Now the custom events are the likes, right? So I created one called like, and then I also have one called likes, which is the one we are using. So I just like select likes. And as you can see, I already have some information that I uh, I was testing the other day. And here you can see the data, the real data that we're getting from the users. So every time that someone likes a post, I can see here that this user with this email, with this platform, um, you know, was liking a post. Now we can see also the number of likes of this post. Maybe we could add the, the ID of the post as well. Uh, but yeah, you can find any other kind of information that you need. It will be here, but this will be hard to understand, right? Because you have a bunch of data and you'll need to scroll down here and see all this information. 
And uh, now, as you can see, I'm using two accounts, the one with Outlook, and then I'm also using the one with Gmail. In this case, I used, uh, um, you know, for iOS, the Gmail. Now, to show you that this is working, guys, let me go to the dashboard here. Um, so let me move this a little bit to the left. Um, I'll start just liking some posts with the iOS simulator. Okay. And this hopefully will start sending some data to my dashboard. And now let's do the same on Android. This is another account. So let's just give a bunch of likes to these people. <laughs> okay. And yeah, but let's go back here. I just reload. As you can see now, we can see two people online, which is great that I can see real time information about my application. I can also see, you know, some of the data that we're used to, like the active users, and then we can change the range here. Uh, but once we have that, let's keep scrolling down. We can also see the Android versus iOS distribution screens, etc. But I also have this uh, custom dashboard and I'll show you how to create this. So I'll just go ahead and delete these two. This is a new feature that I was talking about. Based on the custom events that we created, we can come here and say, let's say iOS likes. Now I want to know how many likes we have from coming from iOS, right? So we can simply select the custom event from the dropdown, which is likes. And then we can apply filters, which is something that I really like. So the filters will depend based on the properties that we assign to the payload of the custom event. So I want to select the platform and then we can apply an operation, which is huge. This is something that I love about Pexa. Um, so we can say is, is not, contains, not contains. So I'll just say is and then say iOS. Okay. And um, I'll just add this one and click save. And that's it. All right. Now, as you can see, we have in total eight lights that came from iOS. Now let's say that we want to see the total likes, right? No matter the platform. So let's go and say total likes. Now in this case, I'll select likes, but I won't apply any filter because I'm interested in, you know, all the likes. So I'll just click save and we have the total likes, which is 17 which is huge, right? Very easily, we are making sense of this information. Now, in this in this very simple example, we are just, you know, playing around with likes, but now I have a, a huge understanding of how many people are liking most the most based on the platform, or even we can filter based on email, right? Now, let's go to the, um, let me make this, bigger. Let's go to the custom events. Let's go to the likes. And as you can see, we have this information, right? So let's use the email. Let's say that we're just interested in one user. I know this won't be, this wouldn't sound like a huge deal, but if I come here, I just want to mention that, you know, um, likes by bit or just paste the, you know, the email here. Um, and then we can select the custom event, select the uh, email, and then say that this is equal to this user, right? And add this and save. Now I can see the likes, but specifically for this user. Now let's say that you are testing something in production and uh, you want to, you know, exclude your likes because you were testing and creating data in production. So if you want to see real data, we can do something very similar. We can say likes without and then my email. So without my email, you know, we just grab the same custom event. We'll just go to the email and then we, we will say it's not right. Hit save. And without me, we have seven likes. Now, 
this would be you know something that it might be helpful i'm just i'm just saying we have a lot of flexibility based on this information and you can do a lot of things that can give you a really nice understanding that that will help you to make better decisions for your application now I'll just go ahead and delete these two and let's just add the android lights so i'll just say android lights and then select my custom event now the cool part about this is that I only have one custom event and I am able to create a bunch of, um, you know, a bunch of graphs, a bunch of widgets, um, based on the filters, which is, which is great. Now let's select the platform for this one. And let's say is, um, great and save. Okay. So now I'm able to see Android lights in real time. Now we have nine. But if I come here and say, and give light to this one in a moment, or maybe just now, if I come here and reload the app, uh, reload the website. Okay. It's still nine, but in a moment it will be 10. Um, so yeah, basically this is what I wanted to show you guys. We can also see, you know, the, the filters down here. And by the way, the one, you know, the one that I, that I wanted to show you as well, just to show that this is working on with numbers as well to make filters. Um, I will create, you know, likes with more than three likes and it won't be likes would be posts. So I'll say post with more than three likes. Let's go to the custom event likes. Let's use the, um, post likes, um, field, and then it's greater. Right. So it's greater than three. Let's add this. Let's hit save. And let's just scroll to post with more than three likes. And we only have two. This is great. Now the Android likes has been updated. As you can see, now we have 11, which is good. This is almost real time. I mean, it's taking just a couple of seconds, which is nice. And now I also, I can also see the post with more than three likes. And if you want, like I mentioned before, you can send as well the ID of the post if you're interested in things like that. So it, it, overall, guys, this is, you know, it's great to see that we can basically expand this as we need, um, no matter what kind of things you, you need to do. I, I've been, I was able to do all this just with one custom event, which is great and in different platforms as well. So uh, just to finish this video, I want to mention as well that we can change the layout here and there's no limit of how many you can create. So it's good. Um, and yeah, that's all I wanted to show you for this video, guys. I hope you like it. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to check my other video if you want to learn how to install Bexo from the beginning. And um, yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.